Hi there, this is John from RevSoft and in this presentation we'll be showing you how to set up the RevUB XML command line in RevSchedule on Windows. If anyone has any questions or comments please feel free to email me on the email address shown. A lot of companies running JDE Enterprise One or One World have had some difficulties when trying to automate the run UBE XML command line as it does require three executions of the command line to execute the function. The first execution is to generate the base XML file, the second execution is to build the command XML and the third execution is to submit the report to be executed. Looking at the JDE document flow from one of their documents you can see here it goes through a three step process to generate the results of a run UBE. So we looked at that, discussed it with some of our customers and they said why don't you just create one command line that will do all three. So we created Rev UBE XML. It does all the three functions in the execution of one command line. A few of the customers also said wouldn't it be good if we could just pass in slash user equals dash f and that contains the location of a user and password file so that none of the security information is exposed when anyone is looking at the scheduler or the command line that executed. And the, th the other thing that we decided to put in is instead of just using the run UBE with ordinal positions we'd add the standard arguments there slash user etc so it makes it a lot easier to see. So now let's take a look at how it works. With all the other command lines that we have in scheduler definitions we have what's called a command builder. Now a command builder is a form here that allows you to enter details in and as you're entering the details, so if we check the box there for yes, it'll change it there. And what we can do then is it will build the command for us. So as we're entering data in, it will build the command for us. And then all we have to do is cut and paste and put that into a scheduler script. So on one of our servers here, where we do have the Rev UBE XML command line, there it is there. That is what it looks like when it's built. Now the command builder can also reverse engineer command lines as well. So if I paste that in there, it's going to show me all the arguments and keyword values that are in there for that execution of the RevUB XML. Anywhere it's got the hash or pound sign at the front means it's a variable. So what we have in here is if we look at the variables defined within Rev Scheduler, starting with hash USR, the user variables. So we can see our JDE variable there for the connection, the path and the password. They're going to be used in there. So basically once we have that we can then just grab the command, cut it and paste it into a command script. The other thing you can see is when you've got it in a variables in the command script there, you click the preview button, it will show you the raw command as it's going to execute up there and the translated value because the variables are translated as the command line executes. So we can see it there. So quite simply, we can just go to the command builder, go to RevUB XML, enter the values in there, get the command, put it in a scheduled job, execute the job. Now what happens when that job executes is you'll see it's running on the Windows server there, Autono XM. You'll see there's a JDE. This is our version of the One World logo. Now one of the things we do have in the command line there is we have a JDE Connect and a JDE Schema. That will be used to access the JDE tables when Scheduler is running it so we can get the information and it only requires read-only access and write it into our database. When it executes here I can see when the job ran. That's no problem. I can see the scripts it executed. There's a script it executed. It's in white so it means it's completed normally and our One World logo here will actually show us the actual One World data from the JDE tables which is why we need the JDE connection and the schema to connect to. As we can see it ran there, its status went from submitted to processing to done. We've got the times there, we've got the queue, the environment and the different process IDs because when it goes to submitted it goes with the process ID. When it actually processes it's a different process ID because the UBE XML engine processes it. We can see that on the on the operations panel there. We can even go to an enterprise operations panel on a focal point. Here's one of our i-series focal points 
and I can look at that job there. I can still see all the details to do with that job there, as well as the One World details, which have been sent across to the focal point as well. So this makes the execution of the Run UBE XML a lot simpler, quicker, and easier to read by using the Rev UBE XML. You go from three different executions and a lot of batch files down to one here with the readability of slash env, slash role, slash report, etc. etc. If you've got any questions about this or anything to do with the Rev UBE XML, please feel free to email me on the address shown. Thank you.